Hi viewers, good day. Welcome to Vsparks. Today we are going to discuss what is data, its classification, and we are going to see what are all the data services available in Google Cloud Platform with a brief outline for each and every services. If you like this video, please subscribe to Vsparks channel and click the bell icon for the latest updates. This is the agenda of this video. We are going to discuss on these topics in this video. What is data? Data is nothing but a piece of information. A data can be anything. A video file is a data. A server log file is a data. A traditional database is also a data. Whatever that gives information about something either directly or indirectly is called as data. Data is basically classified into structured and unstructured. A structured data has a schema. Whereas the unstructured data does not have a schema. Schema is nothing but a skeleton which holds the information. Using which you can easily infer what the data is. For example, you take a database in structured type. Inside the database, you will have the tables which is constructed with so and so columns. Now, you will insert your data in the table rows. Now from this, you can realize that your database has a schema, meaning your database has some structure with which you can infer the things very easily. In unstructured, there is no schema. To infer things from the unstructured data, you need to process the data, analyze the data and at last you need to visualize it. Then only you will infer the things. Almost 80% of the organizational data is unstructured. Structured data is further classified into relational and non-relational. Relational data will have a static schema. Example, MySQL database, Postgres SQL databases, etc. etc. Now, what is static schema? The columns or the skeleton that you define in a relational databases are fixed throughout its database table. You cannot change it. For example, if you have created a table with 5 columns and you have inserted 10 rows of data. In the 11th row, you cannot have 6 columns since the schema is fixed. On the other hand, non-relational databases will have a dynamic schema. Examples of non-relational databases are key value DB, document DB, wide column DB and graph DBs. Last two lines represents data caching, processing, analytics and visualization layer which can be done in both structured and unstructured datas. These are the services offered by Google Cloud for each and every type of data. You need to choose the service based on the type of your organizational data. For example, if you have a relational data, you can choose either Cloud SQL or Cloud Spanner to store your relational data. We will discuss each and every services in the forthcoming slides. We are not going to cover the services in detail. You need to choose the right service or solution based on the type of data, cost, availability, durability and consistency. Unstructured data services of GCP You have two services of GCP in unstructured data service category. They are persistent disks and cloud storage. Persistent disks can hold up to terabyte storage capacity. It is shortly referred as PD. Persistent disks gives you virtual storage disks for your virtual machines. There are three types of disks 
you can provision using persistent disks service they are standard persistent disk solid state drive persistent disk local solid state drives that is local ssds cloud storage can hold up to petabyte plus storage capacity which means it is unlimited this cloud storage system is a flat file system and it is used to store objects or blobs objects can be anything it can be a video file it can be a log file it can be a music file etc etc regional multi regional near line cold line are the storage classes available in cloud storage based on the accessing frequency of the object you need to choose the storage class for your objects of course cost also varies based on the storage classes under relational data services of gcp gcp offers cloud sql and cloud spanner cloud sql can hold up to terabyte storage capacity cloud sql supports two database engines they are mysql and postgres sql cloud sql offers many features that includes replication high availability failover and vertical scaling vertical scaling is nothing but increasing the cpu ram and storage in a single cloud sql instance on the other hand cloud spanner offers horizontal scaling which is nothing but increasing the compute memory storage that is cpu ram and storage by extending the cloud spanner instances or nodes across multiple locations globally there is no competition for this cloud spanner by any other cloud vendor both these services are suitable for transactional consistency which means these relational database services can be used as a transactional databases under non relational database services you have cloud big table cloud data store and then cloud firestore services cloud firestore is discussed in the next slide the capacity of cloud big table is petabytes It is a fully managed wide column NoSQL DB which has low latency, high throughput and high scalability. Some examples of this kind are Cassandra and HBase. The capacity of cloud data store is up to terabyte level. Cloud data store is a fully managed document DB which stores the data in XML or JSON format. It also supports acid transactions. Some of the examples of this kind are MongoDB, CouchDB and DynamoDB. Remember, these NoSQL databases should not be used as transactional databases. Finally, you have Cloud Firestore in non-relational category. which is a fully managed serverless nosql db specifically suited for mobile web and iot applications next is caching services of gcp we have cloud memory store which is used to build application caches that provides sub millisecond data access this memory store supports both redis and memcached services or products under data processing services of gcp you have cloud data flow cloud pubsub and cloud data prep cloud data flow is a data processing service based on an open source framework called apache beam data flow is best suited for both batch and stream processing 
data pipelines can be constructed using data flow. Cloud PubSub is a fully managed messaging services of GCP. PubSub is a global service that is used to send and receive messages via HTTP or HTTPS. PubSub supports both push and pull architectures. Cloud Data Prep is a visual tool for cleaning and manipulating your data. Next is Analytics Services of GCP. You have Cloud Data Proc and BigQuery. Cloud Data Proc is a managed services used to create Hadoop and Spark clusters in GCP very easily. Data Proc supports almost all the frameworks of Hadoop and Spark like Hive, Pig and Apache Spark. You can also integrate to use Google Cloud Storage for storing Hadoop data instead of HDFS. Google Cloud Storage is cheaper than that of HDFS. Data Warehousing and Data Analytics Services of GCP is called as BigQuery. BigQuery is fast, no ops, fully managed, low-cost interactive analytics system that can hold petabyte scale databases. It has very good integration with other services of GCP natively. It has its own storage system but it also supports external storage systems like GCS that is Google Cloud Storage, Google Drive, Bigtable, etc. Encryption feature is also available in BigQuery. Cloud Data Lab and Cloud Data Studio are the data visualization services of GCP. Data Lab is an interactive tool for data analytics and machine learning based on Jupyter Notebooks. Data Lab supports many programming languages like Python, JavaScript, HTML, etc. etc. Actually, this data lab is launched in a compute engine virtual machine. Cloud Data Studio is a reporting and visualization tool that is completely free. It is a powerful chart and graphing tool. In other words, it is a powerful business intelligent tool. It supports many data sources using which you can create charts graphs etc for your business reporting that's it from my side i think uh, this is the summary that we have discussed so far in this video thank you from vsparks and thank you for watching this video